Creatures of the unknown. Which ones do you think are real? If any. What if they're all real? Maybe. How cool would that be? Hello, I'm Ash. And I'm Lynn. And this is Only, Only If You, you Can, Can Keep, Keep Up. Up. Hello. Today we're going to talk about different creatures of the unknown, different myths and stories. There's so many out there, but we just picked a few to discuss and, you know, we'll talk about if we believe in them. Do you believe in them? Maybe we can change your mind. Never know. Okay, we're going to start with Bigfoot. Do you believe in Bigfoot? I don't know. I don't know. Like, on, like, gun to head, do you believe in Bigfoot? Yes. You, I believe there's something out there like him. Yeah? Maybe not the Bigfoot specifically, right. but I think okay. there's something out there. Like I don't him. believe in Bigfoot. I don't think it's real. I don't think... There's no way. I, I just... I can't... I believe there was a creature like Bigfoot maybe a long time ago, like a long time ago. Like, they have drawings of Bigfoot in yeah. caves. You know, back then, maybe. Right. But now, with what we have, our technology, the way the world is, you know what I mean? Like, there's absolutely no way. Do you... Okay, so... I mean, there's, like, big apes and gorillas, and there's humans. Right. And there's all these years of evolution and... You don't think that maybe some got mixed up along the way and got lost out in the wilderness? and No, and I have, like, reasons why. Okay. okay. First of all, we'll start with any picture taken of Bigfoot is not clear. Right. We are in 2023. Even 10 years ago, it yeah. doesn't. Our photographs are epic with our yeah. cell phones. I'm Granted, that's now, but even 10 years ago, cell phones had cameras, you know. Right. There's not a clear picture. Oh, I fully not what. agree with that. They're grainy. They're blurry. They're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the time we, have... like the last 10 years, we have come so far with mm-hmm. photography in general. We should have a clear picture. Yeah. We, we should 100% have a clear picture. Yeah. Another thing is there are sightings all over the world. It's not just America. Right. There's some in Russia. There's some in Canada. There's some in Antarctica, which that would be the Yeti, essentially. Here's but where I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. I'm a little bit confused. <clears throat> just came to me. So, okay, the grainy pictures. Mm-hmm. With the way technology is now, they can be easily fabricated to look real, but they're not. Do you think there is a chance that if he is real or there's something like him out there, that he's distorting our images in some way? That maybe we're not able to get a clear picture. Just an idea, just off the top of my head. Just like his energy distorts. Yeah, like maybe it throws things off because if they wanted a good fake picture that seemed real, they could fabricate it so easily now. But if a creature can do that, why is that creature not doing more? You know what I mean? Mm. Like I can take a picture of a bear with no problem eating right. and mauling another animal. Right. But I can't get a picture of a Bigfoot. If a Bigfoot could distort a picture, well, maybe his intelligence is higher to where he knows that he doesn't want to be seen he doesn't want to be out whereas a bear is just his natural habitat he doesn't care so essentially you're saying a bear or, if I'm he's sorry, more evolved bigfoot's an alien no i mean not an alien necessarily if he's out there i feel like he's got a higher intelligence than what a bear would have like he would know when to okay. run and when i'm not saying he's real because i don't know right but i'm saying hypothetically speaking maybe he is of higher intelligence okay not higher than us but enough to know when to run and how to throw things off in some way okay i don't know something okay. to think about it just came right. to me it's not it's right. not like the, the theory i have normally i just right okay um the sightings that are all over the world they're everywhere they're they're you name it um how do they survive then how does one creature survive in iceland same creature survive in the desert or the mountains there's different what do they eat do I feel eat? like it would be like how different humans survive in different places. Maybe they adapt, you know. Okay, they... but humans have, that's another thing I go on later. Humans have tools to survive. Right. These don't. These, these, they're not bears. They can't maul and they're, you know, we don't know. We haven't found, yeah, they say they find caves with bones and the Sasquatch or the Bigfoot dug the drug, sorry, the animals there to eat and maul, but so could a bear. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And then if you want to go into that, how about in the winter? A lot of people think Bigfoot is a, I'm going to say the wrong one. Is it carnivorous meat, herbivores? Mm-hmm. Okay, herbivore. Eats only really? plants like and berries. Vegetation, yeah. Oh. Something that That's big. Okay. Something that big. It needs a lot more than that. Well, no, think back dinosaurs, brontosaurus, brachiosaurus, they were massive. Oh, so true. That's a good. Maybe he is prehistoric and he's, I don't know. I'm I'm just, that's a possibility. I I'm not think saying I that. believe. I'm just right, coming no. up with like no, off the top right. of my head things no, that. I totally, I totally, maybe, I'm there with you. So if he didn't need meat, then maybe he could survive off just vegetation and what's out there. But yeah, in the winter, maybe he does like a bear. Maybe okay, he hibernates. Here and, we go to another thing. Um, if he survives on just berries and trees and fruit, why don't we see him picking berries and trees and fruit? Like, uh, something that big would need to be seen. Like, you see bears all the time eating vegetation. Right. All the time. That's what a bear is literally doing 90% of its day, searching for food. We don't see a Bigfoot doing that. Right. And, I mean, uh, we're everywhere at this point. Humans have literally invaded the entire true. earth. And it's not like a time of day thing because people camping or people out looking exactly. at night. Unless he has some type of camouflage, mm-hmm. like cow geckos and things like that can camouflage into there. But then you go with that. There's nothing that large that has that camouflage. Dude, that we know of. <clears throat> so, and that's the point in Bigfoot. Like, right. we do not know. Right. Um, nobody and nobody. There's been Bigfoot sightings everywhere. Okay. All over the world. Like I said, right. nobody has ever seen more than one at a time or any young ones. They mm. are all, every one of them is mentioned as a seven to 10 foot tall creature lurking in the woods. Solitary creatures. And yes. maybe maybe they can't reproduce if they are out there. Maybe they've been there a so long then, time. I was going to say, wait, so then now we're getting into age. Yeah. So that one Bigfoot has lived right there for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's things out in the ocean that have been there for hundreds of years. But we're not talking about the ocean. Right. The ocean is a whole different level. Yeah, you're right. But, I mean, theoretically speaking, it's not impossible that some large creature, and maybe they're like spread throughout the world in different locations for a reason. Maybe there's some okay, kind of protector. Okay, but then you go to where did they come from because they had to have been a baby at one time and there's no documentation. Right. Unless if they've a, just been here so long. Maybe it's another dimension thing too. <laughs> like you he go, comes you up always when he wants go to the dimensions, well, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I think that's how a lot of things pop up. No, they come I mean, in through yeah. different... We may see him when he wants us to see him or when, when he can't quite hold his veil <laughs> his okay. barrier maybe he's popping in and out of realms or something i don't know we don't know fuck i mean so that's a little too far-fetched for me for bigfoot like some things no i totally agree gum in and out of realms but bigfoot like i to think survive on this planet that long there has to be some kind of portal he can go into for safety because i don't know how or, maybe it's just a case or wait but, or he's not real or he's not I real mean, it's or that he's easy. not real yeah yeah true right? true yeah i feel like there's something out there or at least at one time there was i feel like at one time there was so we saw it a long time ago and then the myth started yeah. well okay the myth started like i said before so long ago yeah. there's pictures of him on caves you know what i yeah. mean it's that long so but i think it was the uh 60s the, the, the infamous photo that everyone's seen, the black and white grainy one of him, it looks like he's strutting himself down a beach or something, yeah. was in 1967. That's when it hyped back up. Mm. I mean, I'm sure he came throughout the time, but that's when it really hyped back up. Maybe he's like the, um, oh, what are they called? The uh, cic- cicadas, where they come out every so often, like every seven years okay. or something like that. <laughs> Maybe he only emerges <laughs> once every right? ten years. Maybe he goes into some like carve, like c- hypersleep thing cave. and then comes out at certain times. I mean, maybe. Who knows? I mean, what is okay. it? What was the animal we said could nap for like three years at a time? Was it a snail or something? I can't remember. Maybe he does I something like that. I think it like was that. a snail, yeah. Maybe he does something like that. Maybe. <laughs> but okay, he ramped back up in the 60s and I think... It started with, oh, it's a Bigfoot. We're calling him Bigfoot because we have the footprints and we have the photo and blah, blah, blah. And I think I think people need to believe in the unknown. They oh, need yeah. to believe there's something out there. They Definitely. need to. So essentially they fabricate these things in their brains and it's like a mass yeah. belief. Oh, you know, yeah. like I, I don't think he's real. I truly do not believe he's real. And that's my opinion. You could totally 
come with me with a total another argument, and I will 100% believe you. So you think you, but maybe at one time there was something like that, yes. and the stories have just and since kind of kept, carried yeah. on and on and on and on and on, and now legend, that's, yeah. yeah, literally, yeah. yes, a legend, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But, yeah. I could see, I um, yeah, I'm not going to get on to someone for saying they don't believe or that they do, because, like you said, it brings us some kind of, not comfort, but excitement for life to not have the answers to some things. Maybe like once you finish I mean, a puzzle. I think it brings me some comfort because I I know we don't know everything. Yeah. And it's kind of like we can still evolve. Like yeah, we can exactly. still learn. There's always still... more to know, more exactly. to learn. Because yeah. once so we is... figure out, I don't know if you've ever watched the show The Good Place. No. It's like once they finally reach The Good Place and they've done everything they've wanted to do. They're bored as hell. Yeah. They're like, yeah. okay, we're ready to move on. There's like, we've done it all. We've seen exactly. it all. Exactly. Yeah. So no, yeah, I understand. Keep, I mean, yeah. Like once you finish a big project or a puzzle and you've got that sense of like relief and accomplishment, like you got to move on to another project. Mm -hmm. So our brains are constantly looking for more stimulation. Right. So. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm going to talk about sirens as I find them very intriguing. And I know this isn't like a, it's a different type of creature, but, um, I've always, wait, a siren is a mermaid. See, that's, I've always thought they were like dark mermaids. Right. And okay. that's, I've always, like, in my head, that's what I've always thought. They've got this beautiful song that draws men in. I always thought they were, like, an evil mermaid. I thought they had, like, the fish body and the human top. But I was doing some research and found that, I may, now, maybe this has just evolved over time. But the origin, that they actually have bird bodies, that they're, like, uh, like bird on bottom, human on top. And they were originally, <gasps> yeah, like, hybrid creatures. Because nowadays, when people talk about sirens, they talk about mermaids. Like, it's See, like that's a similar what I thing. Thought. They sang the song yeah. and called the sailors in and that's killed the sailors, thought. right? That's what I thought, too. Yeah, I re and yeah, my oldest came in and was like, we were talking about it. And she's like, no, they are not. That's You're talking about uh, harpies. Is that right? Harpies? Oh, I have no idea. Like, I thought those were sirens. That's because harpies have like the big wings and like, yeah, but they're these are like sea creatures. But what I was reading was, like, the origin, like, Greek mythology, like, way back when. Right. You know, they were, like, the daughters of a river god. There was, like, three monstrous sisters that were, they were calling, you know, to the sailors to bring them in, to lure them in with their beautiful, sweet song. And, you know, to their demise, to their destruction. And then they'd, you know, kill them or whatever. I knew that story or that, like, idea. But I always thought that they were, like, mermaids. But everything I was reading, like, with the original was saying that they're bird bird bodied I'm like okay that's even more interesting like hmm. I don't know that I believe they're real but also in the ocean <laughs> once again there is so much undiscovered so much we don't know out there you could literally tell me that there was I can't even think of anything right now um a dragon with a human head bird feathers and an eel tail that lived at the bottom of the ocean, I would believe you because right? we don't know. Right. We the do not know. The ocean is so vast. It's yes. like space. There's just so much out there that we don't know. We will never know because we have only explored it's such a like tiny space, portion. Though. We know more about space than we right. do our ocean. Yeah, so at least our... Let's do that. Surround, yeah. yeah. At least our galaxy. But yeah, like there's so much down there mm -hmm. and we can't get down there. We, No one will ever know. There's probably uh, I think whole we'll civilizations. And I think certain people know they just don't like to tell us things. But yeah. that's my and opinion. And like how things disappear and, they, you know, mm -hmm. talk about lost civilizations and all that. And all once again with portals, I think there's so many things down there into different realms. Into di I mean, I fully believe in all that. The full ocean can be an actual portal if you right. think about it because we physically cannot get to it. Right. So would that not be the perfect place to place a portal? Right. Or to create a portal. I don't yep. even know if the portals just pop. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy to think about. But I can't say they're not really out there. I know they're more of a, like, mythology type of story, but not one that people claim to see. But I don't know that I don't believe something like that's out there. I mean, who's to say there aren't mermaids? I mean, or I sirens. Think, uh, I, I would think... Like, if there were a mermaid, I would... Th okay, like, when I think of a siren, I think of, honestly, like... Like you said, kind of like a dark mermaid. Yeah. Like, half fish, half human. Uh, with weird hair yeah. and... Not real well, hair, like, like, tentacle like, hair. beautiful, but, like, dark. Like, super, yeah. like, enticing. Like, just draws people Several in Several movies beauty. do do it right. I cannot think of one movie that would 
There's a couple movies where you see the sirens, and you're like, that. that's what yeah, I picture. More like what it would actually... Exactly. Like, yeah. that's what I essentially thought they were. But. Yeah. And I, and I think that's how most people think of them now. I, like, I think it's changed over time. Like, the original... Uh, the original stories and the Greek mythology and all that, you know, it's probably changed through time, but I don't know. I do like the idea of like someone, <laughs> the thought of like being able to captivate like that. Like, I'm sure there's something out there that can do that. Think of how like birds call to other birds and, you know, things. Oh, like, yeah. I'm sure that something out there has a song that is captivating enough to bring the sailors in and make him bring like all the boys ah. to the yard <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like, my milkshake it's my song <laughs> and then okay. she like murders them right right like, isn't that yeah. the legend she yep. brings, brings them the song, to yeah, brings to them and her murders destruction them. just like she carries them to the bottom them. i don't know how she kills them i think she drags them to the bottom of the ocean i think that's i could be totally wrong that might be i, but could, I think she does yeah i'm sure because i don't think they eat them or anything no. but i think it's more of a like just to kill them like <laughs> because because like, I don't think they are known to hurt women. Like, they're more it's a of a... men thing. Yeah, like, it's they're protective a, a of the women. A man thing, but, not a men thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, my next one is the Kraken. Ooh, mm. that's a good one. <laughs> We're staying in the sea for a minute, I guess. Yes. Uh, the Kraken, if you do not know, is a sea monster that appeared off the coast of Norway, Greenland, and Iceland. Mm -hmm. So, it's up there. Yeah. It's way up there. Um, they killed sailors in two different ways. One was creating a giant whirlpool that sucked the ship to the bottom of the sea. Mm. And the other one, its large tentacles, would grab the ship, essentially, and sink it to the bottom. Wow. And see, I don't know a lot about the Kraken because it's one of those that, like, ooh, like, gives me chills because ocean stuff. You have And then you no think of, like, idea. the octopus and the giant octopus and how smart they are. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, like, one of the top smartest animals on Right. It. And that's just what we've seen. How do we know that they haven't? evolved or that there's not something like them out there that's stronger and faster and smarter and oh yeah yeah so the um so is it essentially like a big powerful octopus it's what i read is an op it's like a cross between an octopus and a squid oh, okay okay that's what okay the stories track back to 1200 ad so they would write i guess like there were pictures, like old ancient looking pictures yeah, and I stuff. Think so many people were out there on the open sea back then, yes. with, like open, like on boats where they could see out rather than yeah. enclosed ships. So they probably saw a lot more than we do exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? Um, he he lives he lived. I'm sorry, in the deepest part of the ocean, when the ships would pass over, on the surface, the kraken would devour the entire ships within minutes, <laughs> literally grab and do or it would create the whirlpool anything like that nom, nom. i wonder what his like motive was like what did he like about that ship full of people other than it was in his way i was gonna i think it from what i take just from the little bit of research i did it's just like you're in my area right this like, is the this deepest is my part domain. this is Don't my area <laughs> this is my hole don't mess with like me. how a dog barks and freaks out on somebody like yes. this is my fucking property Right. The yeah. first written account of the Kraken came from a man and his son that lived in Norway. They were crossing the deep waters in Norway. They saw the beast under the sea. Mm. Somehow did not get taken. I, I It wasn't a big, big ship, so I don't know if that's why. It was a it very smaller ship because they were any. just on a quick journey. Yeah. Um, they reported it to the townspeople, and then within weeks it became legend everyone hmm. passed it on and was talking about it and then more and more accounts happen and oh yeah i've seen that and oh yeah i've done that you know so it goes hmm. into legend yeah. at that point yeah um back then when we shipped everywhere right. you know we, we did the shipping um full crews hundreds of men would go out on a ship sail to another part you know we don't know but it happened um sometimes they would just not come back just poof just disappear, disappear literally and they wholeheartedly believed it was because of the Kraken. The Kraken took them. Not that there was a storm. Not that they right. sailed to the wrong land. Not that you they just, got lost. It was literally a Kraken. Do you believe it? 100%. Me too. I fully believe that. Yeah. yeah. There's actually accounts of giant animals, like a giant squid right. or a whatever, dying. And the evidence of it eating it with something 10 times its size wow. and like something about the tentacles and the way it was wrapped and blah blah mm. blah they do have loose evidence yeah. i'm not going to say it's 100 percent true because 
Who knows? Right. But yeah, they do have some kind of evidence that it could have been true. That's awesome. They also had ways. I don't know how. I shouldn't say awesome. That's not awesome. But it is. <laughs> it, it is awesome because it's, I don't know. Just to believe something yeah. is actually under there that would take whole ass ships on. If it's still there today, no. I don't. Right. We have too many boats and stuff and nothing has happened in yeah. centuries, you know, so. And probably all the underwater exploration is scared it off or whatever. whatever. Maybe it's I, deeper but now. But then again, once again, the ocean, we don't know. It's so vast, right. Exactly. We have no idea. There could be something under there that could yeah. take a whole. It well, it'd be, be a, it would be a cruise ship at this point. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be right. an actual ship carrying supplies or yeah. whatever we were doing. But a Kraken. There are actually signs that a Kraken is coming. Oh. But something I didn't understand about this, and I have some of the signs, so we'll talk about it in a second. But what I don't understand about this is how do we know there are signs of the Kraken coming if your ship gets devoured if right. you see a Kraken? Right. Is there like one or two low, little low survivors just like swimming back you know to shore I mean? like, I saw but the then, sun. Then there was the story of the man and his son who did not get ate by right. the Kraken. So, I mean, maybe... Maybe some people, some people didn't. have seen it coming and they were exactly. on the outskirts and didn't quite. Okay, the signs are pretty, they're, I don't want to say they, yeah, because it's like, it could literally be anything. Yeah. Okay, the signs are fish leaping out of the water, like up and out, instantly out of nowhere. Right. Could be, yeah, it could be a shark. Could exactly. Be a, yeah, we don't know. a mass amount of bubbles, hmm. which I guess I could see that because it's something coming could have farted, up, I you mean. know, <laughs> something could have an abundance of jellyfish swimming by hmm. because they would be scared. Yeah. Large waves. Large waves, I figured, would be the first thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything big enough to make that kind of commotion? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Some uh, waves. Sudden bad weather. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Just like, instant. It's storming. It's like it's strong enough to, like, create its own weather pattern. Exactly. Which... Are to stir up enough in the sea to like because it's all, all it's connected. all connected yeah. somehow. Yeah, yeah. Those are the mm. signs that you got a crack in coming, and you should probably wow turn. This... Well, the other thing I read said that um, no ship could escape mm. once you saw that kraken and you knew it was coming, and you you're, you're just dead. Sucked in. There's yeah. no there's nothing you could do. Literally pray, I guess. There's no if running. You, pray. you know, do whatever you do because you're teleport. Going down. I mean. <laughs> Can we do that? I wish. Oh, that's another episode. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So, the chupacabra. It's like, you know, I've heard it described in different ways. I've heard of it as, like, something that flies. I've heard of it as something that's, like... Flies? I've never heard of flying. Well, I I can't find much about that. But, like, when I have it pictured in my head, it's like this mammal slash reptile slash bird like I can't describe but you know everything you read will tell you it's like a more like a kangaroo (laughs) like the shape of like a or like a okay first of all chupacabra in general is what a vampire like creature that's supposed to suck suck the blood of goats it's supposed to devour goats right it's a goat sucker because that's what chupacabra means so people have claimed to have seen it in you know like dusk or dawn when it's like just barely dark and uh i've heard stories you know people seeing it out on the road with its red glowing eyes and its scaly skin and like spikes all on its back but it looks like a kangaroo but i've also seen things that said it's like some people truly believe they're out there but they're just coyotes with mange okay so i I thought it was like a dog with like, I don't want to say tentacles, but these things that are like on the back of its neck, like I guess scales Yeah, maybe? kind of like spikes or scales yeah, or whatever. Like that's Almost what, like dragon-like. Yeah, that's like, like a dragon and it's dog. it's a big dog. Which I guess kangaroos like, are like really big dogs. Yeah. <laughs> but in a oh, hair, it's hairless. Like that's what I hairless, always yeah. in my head pictured. Like a, like a scaly, like lizard type skin. So it's like a mix of a reptile. Kind of like a hyena. Yeah, like a hyena, but with like dragon skin. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, there's been, I don't know, back in like the 90s and I think it was Puerto Rico, there were like claims that, you know, they had seen, that's when it was really talked about, I guess, that people had seen them like out on the road at night and things like that. I don't know. I I think they're out there. And I'm not saying that it's something, it could just be some type of 
animal that has gotten really sick and really like messed up. Right, like you hear a of all those viruses animal. that can take yeah. over. So, yeah, like mange, like the coyote yeah. with mange. It could have or, it literally been like a wolf or a coyote that right. was ill. Yeah. But then what's with the sucking of the blood? Right, the goat sucking, like the because chupacabra, I I think I may be wrong, actually means goat sucker. And See, that's I thought they the killed story. cows too. Maybe I because I always just thought it was cows. Farm animals in general. Oh, I don't maybe. Know. But I've always heard that they they suck the blood of goats or they destroy goats and that they would get on farms and things like that. But uh, yeah, I don't. So this also leads me. This is not related to well, kind of. You know, I'm really into my birds, and my husband is always trying to make the bird noises. And he was doing a whipper will the other day. And it reminded me of, <laughs> we get, they're called, they're called night hawks. They're like little, they're like whippoorwills, but they're usually flying at night and they do these like loud screech. And anyway, we always hear them and see them. Well, I got to reading about night hawks and whippoorwills and they're all part of the night jar family of birds. So I was reading about them and like their history and night jar, I guess, actually translates to like goat sucker too, or something like that. Something to do with goats. And there's, like, these stories back in the day that they would, like, suck the milk. That these birds would suck the milk milk from goats and it would make them go blind. What the hell? Yeah. Like, there's stories of these, like, farmers and stuff, like, years and years ago that would... That these that is... cute little fucking adorable <laughs> birds. These that little is, whippoorwills. But it, that's the most random side quest I've ever been right? on. Right? <laughs> but it made me think of the chupacabra. No, and then we yeah. got to talking about the chupacabra. And uh-huh. I was like, maybe they're, like, little, like... Minions of the Chupacabra. Oh my god! <laughs> like these are my birds. <laughs> Check me out. I'm gonna go suck some. You get the milk. I'll get the blood. We'll take it down. <laughs> I don't know. It just made me think. Like, well, did that really? I can't see these sweet little birds going and like making these goats go blind. I don't know. Some birds can be. There are some crazy birds. Yeah. Oh, we saw one. Oh my god, he was so cute. He... Okay, I won't. <laughs> He looked like a dragon, but he was a bird. He looked just, like, toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. But he was a night jar bird, and he was always oh, so fucking cute. He looked like a, a dragon. That was so cute. You were so cute with your I birds. I love my birds. You're 35 <laughs> years old, but you I know. act like I like, like I'm 50. 80, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, listen to that one. But, yeah, so I don't have a lot on chupacabras. I just think so they're interesting. I, okay, I'm not going to say I saw a chupacabra because I yeah. Not at all. Put it dead. <laughs> what? Okay, so one time we were foiler riding in a very small town. I mean, like, population 200 near where we live. And there was this creature, like, running through the fields. Not beside us, but, like, along with us. Like, far enough away you mm. could just kind of see it jumping. And then it went into the open, and it was, like, this hairless, Ooh. gray. What? How long ago was this? Oh, my gosh. Like, were you young? Probably, like, 15 years ago. Wow. Uh, maybe not that long. I was probably, it was in high school, so I was probably wow. a senior. So I was 18. So you do the math on how long ago that was. Were you high? Just have to ask. No, no not at the moment. Okay. So I'm not saying I don't believe you. I'm just making sure. No, 100%. Um, no, that's I was really not. Interesting. I was sober. And did it, you said it was hopping, like almost no, like No, it was girly? like, okay, you know how like a deer kind of yeah, gallops. gallops. It was doing that, and it was like in a wheat field. And huh. we were on, say, the left, and it was on the right, and it was trying to like, Keep up with like us. Like, it, it was fast. Yes. It wasn't super close to us. Like, it's not like I could lean over and touch it. It was far enough away, but we kept seeing it. And then we went into, like, a field that had already been plowed. And it took off, like, around a corner. And it was gray, big, wow. no hair. What? We stopped the four-wheelers and we're like, because it was us and another group of people. And we're like, what I can't in believe the I've hell? never heard this story. Yeah. Like, I knew you then. <laughs> well, you've known me literally since I was like 12 so wow yeah what else could that be okay maybe it was like a really mangy deer that was like on steroids but or something. it, it no. had the face of a dog it was oh, more wow. oh you could actually see its face well, well like the features not wow. like up close I couldn't like see its eyeballs yeah. or anything or feel its breath but like the features of the face yes we wow. could see the features like a dingo and a dingo ate my baby or a dog <laughs> it's a dingo yeah wow that's and like I said, I, I don't know if it was a chupacabra. I'm not saying right, it was but or not. Right, that's what because it's, that's how they describe it. Yeah. Yeah, like scaly skin. Like, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. 
I believe. I mean, I believe something like that's out there. There's too oh, many stories for too. it not to. Like, that's not to me. That's not really a legend. Yeah, that's more of a what is. But this it's creature? one that makes some people really uncomfortable. And yeah. I don't know. I don't think it attacks. They're known to attack humans. I don't know. I guess they could because they're. I've they just want never blood, heard of that, but I've like, never but, really done research either. So yeah. Okay, so mine is my next one is. Hmm, it's a spooky. It's a spooky. It's a spooky. It's so spooky. And I don't know. Is it a mythological? I guess it is a myth, so the Mothman. Oh, yeah. I, w- I would say still, yeah. It's yeah, all okay. mythological, really. Okay. Right? The um, Mothman, do you know? Do you? I know nothing of him. Nothing? Mm-mm. I've not Absolutely even watched. Absolutely nothing. Mm-mm. Nothing. Have you ever really. seen the movie? Nope. Of course you haven't. Of course scary. I haven't. You don't like anything? No, I like scary movies. I just haven't watched it. I, I would watch it. I'll oh watch it gosh, with you if you want me to. So, we should do a movie night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the Mothman, if... We don't know. It is a moth-like creature, um, like seven foot tall, beady red eyes. Ooh. It's like human with wings. Okay. Like a bird, almost like gargoyle-esque, yeah. I would say. I mean, like you literally can go to Google and Mothman, it's like a black shape with beady eyes. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Okay. He first surfaced in November of 1996 in a town called Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Mm. Um, a couple was at, there There was a place called the TNT area that the National Guard, like, stored TNT. Wow. The couple was heading that way and saw him come out, and apparently it flew over them and chased them out. They went to town, went straight to the newspapers, and told the newspapers, and they printed it the next day. Then, like, this mass hysteria happened. Huh. Like, it was... I wonder if the TNT, like... That's that's the a theory. Light, like you know, the not butt. the light. The chemicals inside of it is a theory. Oh, I was we'll thinking moths. There. Moths are drawn to flames, and I just thought. we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Um, after it was reported, several reports came from everywhere, all over the place. Um, there was actually a man named John Keel. Do you need to say something? You look like you no, need to say I'm something. No, I'm in deep in <laughs> okay. thought. I'm, okay. like, really interested in this. <laughs> There's a man named John Keel. He's actually the author that wrote the book, The Mothman Prophecies. The book then became the movie with Richard Gere. Okay. Okay. He wrote the book. He was in Point Pleasant to investigate UFO sightings. Wow. That's why he was there. He was a big UFOist. He was deep into that. Um, so he was he, already there at this time. Yes, he was there at the time, and he caught wind of this Mothman, and he's like, okay, if you're into UFOs, you're into the weird and mysterious. So right. he's like, well, this is cool. Mm-hmm. We're going to try to figure this stuff out. Like, let's gung-ho about this. Um, He claimed, he started talking to people that, like, had the experiences, saw them, the sightings or whatever. He started speaking to them, and after a few days of investigating, he started getting phone calls to his hotel room that was saying telling him prophecies about things that were going to happen. And oh, wow. apparently they did happen. Wow. That's kind of, I don't know if I believe that. I I believe the Mothman. I don't know. It's just too weird. So what is the, like, his story, his legend, like he makes people see things? Uh, we'll or? get there. No, okay. okay. So um, he would get the weird phone calls. He would also, like, Animals of people who had seen the Mothman would become mutilated, like the mm. dogs, overnight. And they would call him, and he'd come investigate, and yep, a moth. I think he was making claims that weren't exactly backed up by anything, but he 100% believed him. He wrote a whole book about it and went on to this whole thing about it. Um, uh, he also claimed that people who saw the Mothman, who saw the sightings, if they looked at him in the eyes, their eyes would bleed. Oh, wow. That reminds me of an episode of Doctor Who. Anyway, <laughs> but those were, I think that was with the, something with the angels. Is, he, is there any claims that he's um, like a fallen angel? Some or? people think, yes. Yes, that yeah. is true. But um, we also need to point, I want to point out that in Point Pleasant at this time, there was a lot of weird shit going yeah. on. The men in black were spotted. Actual men head to toe in black. Will Smith was there? <laughs> Just kidding. How cool would that be? They were spotted there several times. There were several UFO spottings wow. there and around there at the maybe same time. Maybe he started up or maybe he came with them or maybe he was coming to warn yes. about them. But or? to like debunk but not debunk, like giving you both sides here, the TNT fields had some pretty messed up chemicals within yeah. them. And... um some scientists, or I guess not scientists, people who studied this said those chemicals could 
definitely make your eyes. It, it's it was like a sinus thing, and it could cause okay. eye problems. Probably neurological <clears throat> stuff too. So yeah. So uh, the phone calls supposedly happened for thirteen months while he was there investigating all of this. He went through. He investigated. He investigated for thirteen months. And then the last prophecy he got was that uh, 46 would die soon. Wow. That was his last prophecy. And a bridge collapsed. The silver bridge collapsed and it killed 46 people. Wow. Before the bridge collapsed, several people say they saw him flying over the bridge the day before. Mm. Mothman flying. Like, I think it was like 12 accounts. Wow. Saw him flying over the bridge and then it collapsed. And then he has not been seen huh. in Point Pleasant since. Wow. That's really cool. It makes definitely makes me think of some type of like That's, angel. Like, some people say um, fallen angel. Some people say he's trying to warn. He's right. trying to you know you guys listen. Almost it's like coming, an angel it's coming, of death it's coming. Type of thing. Yeah. But some people also believe it's a message of doom. Hmm. Like he's not good. He is bad. He's yeah. causing these things. Um, he's actually been cited in other disaster areas around the world. Really? Yes. And like, you can Google pictures and it's just like a well, picture of now. the yeah. Loch Ness Monster. I can't believe I never knew it anything about him. It kind of looks like a human in the sky flying. Right? Yeah, um, I just keep thinking like fallen angel or like angel of death or like that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, he was actually sighted around 9-11. Wow. Some people claim, I don't know about that. Some people claim that um, there was a bridge collapse in Minnesota in 2007. He was sighted there. He was swided, swided. He was swided. <laughs> he was cited in two thousand nine for he's the swatted because he's a moth. Well, swine flu outbreak. I saw oh. swine, and so I changed <laughs> it to swided. It's a good, good wording. Yeah. Two thousand nine in the swine flu outbreak in Mexico. Apparently, he was cited there, and then his most recent sighting was in two thousand seventeen in Chicago. Hmm. He was cited by like twenty two people. Wow. Like many people have cited him up in Chicago. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Yes. I, I mean, I don't I don't disbelieve. I think... I think with everything that was going on in that town at that time, because I read his book a long time ago. It was one of my favorite, like, horror stories. Like, yeah. mythological horror story. Not real. When I was, like, 12. Like, I read this book a long time ago. And the movie, I didn't love it. The book's better. Always is. But another thing I forgot to mention was people would lose time. Ooh. And I mean, like... I don't even know some of the, I didn't write it down. So some of the things people would say is like, they would drive to work, which is a five, 10 minute drive. It would be the end of the day by the time they mm. reached their work from their home. Wow. Stuff like that. So Almost that like he created some type of like time see, loop that or kind time of stuff, vacuum. That stuff I think is more connected to the UFOs. Yeah. Could be. I think it was just kind of like a mass collection of all this weirdness just yeah. happening at once and stuff kind of got intertwined. Yeah. Like I'm not saying I kind of believe in the Mothman. Like, I it's. I believe, I mean, I don't, the idea of, like. A flying man. <laughs> well, like, angels coming down to yeah. warn, or, like, I feel it's more of, like, a warning thing. Yeah. Like, a, I'm here to let you all know what's happening, right. or, like, to bring you back with me, or something, right. or whatever. Right. Like, more of that kind of thing. But uh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good one. He's one of my faves. Yeah, I'm going to have to look more into that. I can't believe I did not know much about, like, I've heard of Mothman and knew nothing about it. We him, should so. totally watch the movie I will. Night. I would love yeah. to. I do like, I do like scary movies. I mean, I'm not, uh, yeah. I'll just got to light a candle, you know, take a deep breath and tell myself, nothing's coming through the screen. <laughs> it's like, I watch paranormal stuff, but you know, I'm real sensitive. See, I don't I will like, just, I don't like paranormal movies. Really? I, some of them are just dumb. Oh my God, they're so fake. Just dumb. No, don't get me wrong. There are some very good ones out there, but like. I've seen a few. When the walls start bleeding, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, oh, we'll talk about scary movies. Yeah, that's, time. we're totally I getting get so off. Good on, on a... But talking about bad omens and like, you know, creatures that bring bad news. Okay takes me to like banshees so you know there's the screaming wailing yeah, screaming okay. shrieking they say they're uh death omen like a you know the bringer of the death or whatever they're supposed to show up there's all these you know legends theories whatever that they hear them screaming either out in the woods by their house or near their home and that they they just come there and wail because somebody in the family's going to die or whatever and that if you if you hear them that you start praying or whatever you start but uh, I don't, I don't know. That's one I don't, I don't know a lot about. I just thought it was interesting. Okay. Because 
it is connected to the fairy, mm-hmm. you know, the whole fairy thing. They're supposed to be like sp- spirits of fairies or they're, they're connected to fairies in some way. They say they're like female spirit. Some call it like the hag of the mist or whatever, that they're <clears throat> connected to the fairy world in some way, just a darker because moving on to fairies, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about all that, but some believe they're dark, some believe they're light, some believe there's both. That the fae, you know, they can be evil or good, just like people, you know, that they're, they are little magical spirits, little, they have supernatural powers, and there's stories like lots of like Irish mythology, not mythology, but Is folklore. For, for fairies? Yeah. Okay. Lots of Irish folklore, like that, you know, people have stories that they've seen them or they've been taken to the fairy world or like lots of especially like older people who've told told stories of seeing them or being taken by them or being affected by them in some way and there's places in Ireland where they've got you know like the stone circles and yeah. like the fairy trees and okay. the uh, what are they called like the fairy forts they've got like they're still protected like nobody okay. will touch them because they believe those are like doors to the fairy world that and that if you see like a toadstools or like you know like the fairy ring of mushrooms things like I was that. gonna say the ring of mushrooms yeah, and people like, will I've had say so don't touch them because don't walk in them yeah you they say don't go them. in them that that you'll enter the fairy like world. I've known that my since yeah. I was a child you and do not especially people in Ireland Scotland like they're like really into a lot of them are really into that fairy stuff like they fully believe and you know they're respected but they're feared I believe in the fairies yeah like, I, I really I'm really beginning to think I do <laughs> like. There's just too much that goes on around. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just something for us to believe in. Like, oh, you know, whatever. But Uh, I believe there's, if they're out there, they're good and they're bad. Just like humans. There's there's ones that can help and heal. And there's ones that can harm. Some some are just mischievous and like to Mm -hmm. play around. But I feel like some are dark and can do dark things. And I feel like if you piss them off, you... You know, you ain't coming back from that. Right. And I've heard lots. I know I've heard that they don't like iron. I've heard that once you um, piss them off, that you really, really have to try to get them on your good side again. But that if you befriend them, if you feel they're near and you befriend them and leave them little, okay, trinkets, lots of things, all okay. the trinkets. We have actually had to start doing this recently, my kids and I, because we had things disappearing like left and right, things that would just disappear, small things like. Uh, say a hat or a favorite pair of shoes or a ring or a necklace like things that we knew where we said it it disappeared I mean I've had things like that too right and but I it was getting to where it was happening like daily but then okay. I would go back I would be like give it back please don't know who I'm talking to my ancestor spirits who are fucking around with me or the fairies <laughs> or what but when I'd ask for it back I would go look in that same place and it would be there like the same See, place that, I just that looked. stuff happens to me, and I always blame it on the gnomes. Hmm. I'm always like, the little gnome took it, and I'd like Ooh, it back, and yeah. like the next day I find it or something. Do you believe in gnomes like fairies then, or do you think they're like similar? Or Honestly, related? I think I just say it because just I probably offensive. misplaced it, and yeah. but it's back in the right spot. I like, always joked about it, but weird. now I'm like, maybe I joked about it too much that I actually brought in real fairies. And then I'm like, okay, if this is for real, maybe I need to write an apology so, letter. Okay. <laughs> fairies live in another. Like another dimension. Like they've got, they say their realm is like. I was going to say realm. Like another realm or dimension or whatever. But, and they can cross between the mm-hmm. two. Like that's the. They the say myth some or people can see them if you have a gift. They say some people could see them on certain days. But some wait, come people can out. actually see them? Some people believe that you can really see them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like there's stories of people. Some say like every so many, so many years they'll, they'll be visible or on certain nights they'll be visible. Okay. Or that if you have a gift where you're open that you can see them at any time. Okay. There's all kinds of stories of people seeing fairies. So the know. people that see them, what do they describe them as? Do you know? Just small, like, little people or, like, small creatures that are, like, human-like. So small. literally, like, Tinkerbell. Yeah, like little, little. But I feel like once they get into the fairy world, they're not little anymore. That's what I feel like anyway. So they, like, grow. They're like, how like, many I shrink myself? 
Okay. <laughs> that's what I think. That's, I don't know. I think I do too. But like, I feel like, good... but like on True Blood. You know oh how Oh my they're... gosh, True Blood, the Fae. Yeah. Seriously, that that's is a good, good depiction of it. I that really is think a very good how I would imagine it to be, yeah. If you haven't seen True Blood, highly recommend. So good. Almost uh, want to go back and read all yeah, those books they, again and they, watch the show. Like, because in our world, they're these beautiful human beings. Beautiful. Right. But then they cross over to their realm and, and they're no longer. real features start showing. They're not beautiful. They're <laughs> yeah. gnarly. And it's like they're unmasked once they're exactly. back in their realm. Yeah. Yeah. So I almost wondered the ones that see them and say they're tiny little creatures, if once they walk through that fairy ring or whatever that stone circle they're to their normal size like it's interesting what if what movie is it like Ferngully or something like that oh my god I love Ferngully am I thinking of the right movie I have not seen that in so long it's the one where the humans are like tearing down the trees and the fairy has to save them yeah and that's kind of what I'm thinking of and then you've got like Maleficent like it's like a hidden world of all the Maleficent Maleficent the movies I've never seen those. Oh. I would, I like, I've seen Sleeping Beauty, but oh, I love I've Maleficent. never seen the movies. Oh, it's so good. I don't know why, because I love me some Disney and I love me some Maleficent. Oh, so yeah. I, so I'll watch know. Mothman. You watch Maleficent. Can we'll we watch good. them together? Yes. Okay. Right together. Yes. Okay. I'll have a movie okay. party night. I like watching movies with people versus alone because I won't. I'll yeah. end up on my phone if I'm alone. I'll probably fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like I love movies, but if I watch them on my own, I. Nine out of ten times I won't make oh, it no. through. Okay. Um, but, yeah, there's so many stories. So many stories of people. And it goes deeper and darker. There's so many things about the bad fairies and the good ones. But they say that if you've accidentally invited a fairy. Now, I did a lot of research on this recently because we thought that maybe we accidentally invited them. Because things were disappearing. And every time I joke about it, something else would disappear. Mm-hmm. So I read that you should write them a letter apologizing, letting them know that you respect them. Did you actually them. write them a oh, letter? Oh, I fucking did the damn thing. I'm sure you did. I went all out. I would write this cute little handwritten note like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I've offended you. Uh, I fully respect the Fae. And I, if we can work together, I will leave you offerings. I'm leaving little crystals and charms and little vials with little, like, treats. And, like, they say they like fruits and things like that. They don't like iron. So I didn't leave anything with iron. But, like... So, wait, did stuff stop disappearing? I made a list of, like, please return these items. Okay. I forgot about it the last few weeks, but last time I checked it, I bet five or six of the ten things were already back. Like, so things they, had been missing for a long time. So, it worked. It worked. You know, what if it worked? Do it again. Right? Like, oh, and my And now gosh. I'm like, oh, shit, this is the fairies telling me I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about them. That list is still, it's Sitting still there. Sitting at the yeah. bottom of a drawer somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, I need Same. to go freshen things up a little. <laughs> But yeah, I was I always thought it was a joke, and now I'm like, maybe me joking about it is why I keep having bad luck on things or why things keep disappearing. Like, okay. maybe I need to work with them if they're really out there. I'm sorry, Ferris. I should have worked with you. Like, I want the good ones, though, not the bad ones. Whatever the bad ones. No, thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm like, I feel silly even saying it out loud, but we fucking wrote them a letter and left them little offerings, and our shit started reappearing. Maybe it's coincidence, but... I don't know. Some we're, of those things have been missing a long we're time. We're say the fairies brought them back. <laughs> just go about our day. It doesn't really matter right? if you believe us or not. So Right. It doesn't. It doesn't fucking matter. Mm-hmm. I know what happened. I've never wrote a note to the fairies, I will say. I hadn't until I then. will not walk into any kind of rink. I, even if it's like a ring of dead grass, I'm walking right. the other there way. For a reason. Something like I'm not. There. No, thank you. I don't want to go in there. Right. Like, no thanks. I, well, I feel like I'm, like, overstepping. Like, exactly. Passing. Like, like I, I know like, it's my yard, but something put that there for a reason, mm-hmm. and I ain't going to fuck with it. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not. I will not. Respect. Exactly. I don't care what you are, what you're doing, what your business is. I'm going the opposite way because I don't want to disturb you. Right. Like, I totally believe in hauntings, and if I can believe in a haunting, I can right. believe in anything See? else. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Like, if I can believe in ghosts. If I can believe in ghosts and poltergeists and shit moving my well, stuff around. Why can't I believe in a fairy? Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but it's all interesting. And there's so many more, so many more creatures and oh, yes. mythological beings. And it's just. It was I actually could, hard to choose three. It really is. Yeah. It really is hard. Because yeah. I had so many going through my head. Like, ooh, I would love to learn more about. And I would. Like, each of these I would love to go and read for hours about. Like, I could really just lose myself. I kind there. of did. <laughs> I, I just like kind of really scratch the surface, like, but I some of this deep. is just like things I've read over the years or I've seen like, oh, I got into something one time too. I got to reading about 
people believe they have fairy blood. Some people believe they're like actually like, like on hybrids. true blood. Yeah, oh, like on like, true blood. Like Suki. Like they're yeah, like Suki. Okay. Like Suki. Suki. There's some people believe they're actually part fairy. I have a chicken named Suki. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's part fairy. Maybe she, she could take be. it to the fairy she's world. She's so pretty. But I'd read different things like if you have small pointed ears, check. If you have uh, iron issues, check. I blow iron. Um, Wait, no. Are you about to say you think you're a fairy? I thought it was hilarious. I'm not saying okay, I'm a fairy, okay. but I was like meeting all. If you have like a uh, strong intuition and you get overwhelmed around a lot of humans, and I was like all these things, and this is, I'm like, what? Am I like part fae or something? <laughs> I don't. It was weird. I'm like, okay, I'm freaking myself out now. Maybe I like shouldn't do this. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. Like, that's, I know. It's, that's a little. But it's funny. They're. It's not funny. Like I. More power to them, but oh, there are yeah. people out there that if really believe. If you truly believe. believe that, hell yeah, you are. Yeah, there's one hundred percent. That, that is for you, awesome. And there's people that work with the Fay hardcore. Like, I've seen that before, like yeah, yeah like mostly they, on like TikTok. But yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit. It, it freaks me out a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, it freaks me out a little bit. Yeah, not some, them. I, because it's I unknown. respect them, but I, no, the, the Fay. Fay freaks me out because a it's unknown. Yeah, we don't know. Because they always we say, don't, "Don't fuck with the fairies." There's a reason they say that, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's all interesting. I could lose myself for hours and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got for you today. We went a little over our usual time, but that's okay. okay. It's it's interesting stuff. I hope you guys found it interesting. And you can always send questions, uh, information. We always love to hear, you know, interesting stuff to um, our email is only, only if, if you, you can, can keep, keep up, up at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. Bye.